Bonjour y'all, welcome to Date Night with Blinky. Uh, it is Pride Month, and this game is apparently LGBTQ+. I actually don't remember. I think I downloaded this last year. <laughs> I really don't remember. But it seems cute. Um, it's called Highway Blossoms. And I actually don't know if a highway is involved, but I'm assuming so. There's some stuff back here that I can't see. Well, let's get into it. It is very windy today. Um, so if you can hear the wind, I apologize. I can't block it. But anyway, let's let's go see some blossoms. I keep getting achievements for things and I haven't done anything. I think I got like six achievements just for opening the options menu. So, so far so good, I guess. I think this has a good review on Steam. I genuinely can't remember. I should check these things. Probably. I thought that was corn for a second. This music is also not the actual music, I just turned it down for copyright reasons. So, hopefully it matches fine. Let me see. What is this? I'm so sorry music people. I do not want to get copy striked. No apologies. The music ends, the cassette clicks to stop. I've listened to it so many times I've even memorized the placement of the static from the song's original broadcasts. I'm worried the deck might eventually eat the tape, but it never happened to him no matter how many times he played the damn thing, so I'm not too scared. It used to drive me crazy. Every day he played it over and over again. Sure, he would try on something different after a few loops, but soon enough he'd switch back and the cycle would repeat itself. Sometimes things he would do it just to mess with me. I would be in the back in bed, smothering a pillow over my head to block out the music. He would just turn it up louder, even during all-nighters. That was so like him. Even near the end, when we had to finally settle down, he was still pulling that kind of crap. I'd come home from school sometimes and the police would be at the door because the entire block had called in a noise complaint. He said it was because he was hard of hearing, but I know he did it just to get a rise out of the old grouches who lived nearby. I think that was his worst fear, ending up with another bitter sack of bones. Oh, ending up just another bitter sack of bones. So he did everything in his power to be the exact opposite, right up till the end. Of course, that meant I would always have to I'd always deal with the fallout. I can't imagine what the neighbors thought, seeing a little girl go door to door apologizing because some old man decided it would be funny to put plastic flamingos all over their award-winning lawns. He has a point that is pretty funny. Can't help but smile. Just a little. Even if it does hurt. Take a sip of my coffee. Outside a heat haze shimmers over the near-ending ocean of sand. So much desert. Even Roswell was just a rock, sand, and a few shacks. Well, alien-themed, of course. Didn't see any UFOs, though. I'm not used to how dry everything is, even with the AC on high enough to rip, what? on high enough to rip off my eyebrows, I'm still uh, all sweaty. Guess that's what happened when you lay around in snowy Colorado for a decade. In that regard, the desert is a nice change of scenery. You don't exactly hate it. New sights are nice, especially since his health didn't allow him to do a lot of traveling when I was a little girl. I could see myself getting used to this. Well, maybe in another 15 years when I have everything paid off. Ugh, damn it, Amber, snap out of it. You can worry about that later, this isn't your trip, so stop being so selfish. I push the eject button. I take the tape out and look it over, probably for the 20th time today. Um, years worth of brown stains and greasy fingerprints are smudged all over, making it feel grimy to the touch. It still works like a charm, though. There are more cassettes in the glove compartment, a mixture of mine and his, mostly his. I should just play one of those and get it over with. My hand gravitates toward the latch. 
It would be okay, right? No. I snatched my hand away from the latch and flipped the tape over. Once again, I found myself staring. With a sigh, I stick it back into the deck. I reach towards the play button, taking another look to see if the road is still clear. Like always, it... <laughs> okay. Is it? I slam on the brakes, their shriek piercing my skull. A glance on my rearview mirror shows a girl cringing next to an ancient looking car covering her ears as I screech down the road. Making a U-turn of dubious legality, I pull up in front of her car, killing the motorhome's engine. I hop out and shield my eyes from the blazing New Mexico sun. Only now do I realize how precious the AC really is. It doesn't take more than several steps before the girl comes bouncing up to me with a look of relief. Oh my god, thank you, thank you, thank you! I was starting to think no one would ever stop. I think it's worth to get a little closer, until we're finally within touching distance of each other, her smiling face now filling my entire field of vision. Her bright auburn hair is done into a girlish side tail, glistening beneath specks of sweat, standing out in the heat has made her round, pale cheeks a sun-kissed red, but she still looks put together, like the desert would sooner melt her than do any real damage to her looks. I must feel embarrassed to be in front of someone who dresses so cutely, her frilly green top and skirt putting my red t-shirt and khakis to shame. It's all brought together by one thing though, her eyes. They're blue, vividly blue, deep and rich, complementing the traces of misty perfume as she gets closer and closer. Too close, too close, too close. I scramble back and cough trying to hide any awkwardness. N no problem. She is cute. What's she doing out here alone? Driving through hell, is she even alone? I peer off into the plains on the side of the road, half expecting a guy to pop up from his hiding place now that some idiot has fallen for their trap. That idiot being me, of course. But much to my surprise, no one does. Instead, the girl continues to stare at me, smiling as she patiently waits for my response. I glance behind her, focusing on her car. So what's the issue? Your car breakdown? I think so, yeah. I was driving, and I just kind of... Stopped. Yeah... She lowers her head in shame, eyes fixated on her feet, kicking the dust around her. I'm not much of a car buff, but I can take a look at it. Her head pops back up and life returns to her eyes. Oh wow! Could you? Yeah. Can't promise that I can do anything, but I can at least check it out. That'd be great! Alright, first things first then. This thing looks even older than my monarch mama at her home. It was probably a nice car once upon a time, but with a dented grill, multiple scratches, and a faded green, murky green color, it's hard to believe such a cute girl was driving it. I slide into the fabric seat and start the ignition. I don't know too much about how this stuff works, just enough to keep the motor on from giving out, but I can't imagine it's too significant of an issue, it's probably just a dead battery or... No gas. A single car passes by, cooling us with a refreshing gust of wind sprinkled with dirt and sand. Is something wrong? Is this a joke? Oh no, did I break it? Uh, no, it's just out of gas. What? No way! Dad said I should have filled up before I left. Is she for real? Why is this girl in the middle of nowhere by herself? As if trying to force all the ideas into the center of her brain, the girl grabs her head and whines under her breath. Ah, oh, man, and I didn't charge my phone either. What am I gonna do? I'd offer her mine, but I've never had a cell phone in my life. Seems like you'd have to be pretty absent-minded to forget that, though. Not really. I've forgotten to charge my phone a few times. She whines once more and turns to me. Hey, this might seem a little weird. Oh no. But could you take me somewhere nearby so I can get some gas? And what do you know? She actually did it. How long did you say you've been stuck out here? Hmm. I don't know. A few hours, maybe? I've been trying to wave down everyone who drives by, but you were the first to stop. Hold on. Everyone? Yep. 
Seat must have fried her brain. Does she have any idea how dangerous that is? That's probably not a good idea, you know. She cocks her head to the side and gives me a look of genuine curiosity. Like it wasn't obvious or something. Huh? Why? Well, you know. Serial killers. A cute young girl alone in the middle of the desert? It's just asking for trouble. Serial killers. But you're a cute young girl alone in the middle of a desert? W what? <laughs> Ma'am, I am a goblin. Her comeback takes me off guard and I turn away a little, avoiding eye contact. Yeah, but that's different. A smile returns to her face, the same bright one that she showed me when I first pulled over. I'm still avoiding eye contact, but she leans over to the direction I'm looking and continues to smile. So, do you think you can give me a ride? I don't know. Please! It shouldn't take very long. You don't even know where you are. This girl, it's like she didn't even listen to what I said. Still a better me than some psycho. Besides, it's not like a small detour will make me late or anything. I guess it's fine. I'm not in too big of a rush anyway. <laughs> yep. Before I'm even finished, she's springing off the ground, bouncing to the motorhome. Hey, wait! But it's already far too late, as she somehow made her way into the motorhome before its owner, even finding time to give me a small wave from the passenger seat. I heave a heavy sigh, rubbing my temples as I climb back into the driver's seat. The key is still dangling in the ignition. I wrench it around and the motorhome roars to life, forcing a surprise squeak out of the girl. Did you lock the car? By the way, uh, my name is Marina. Thank you so much for helping me out. Amber, don't mention it. Careful not to hit her car, I back up the RV and turn it around, sending us in my original direction. I reach for the play button on the cassette player, finally giving in to temptation, but Marina starts up again. Why aren't we going the other way? Wasn't there a station a little ways back? It was more than a little ways back. I saw a sign a few miles ago that said there was a station not too far from here, so we're going there. Oh wow, I didn't even see that. You're really observant. <laughs> your steering wheel is huge for your tiny hands. Yeah, you're just really oblivious. Not really. How does your seatbelt keep like disappearing from this dimension? Silence falls between us, the roaring of the engine and swishing of the wind from the outside being the only sounds. I take that as my cue and reach for the cassette player once more, finally give... How do you even drive this thing? It's huge! Marina spreads her arm out like an eagle unfurling its wings, almost bopping me on the head in the process. I clear my throat and grab her arm out of the air, gently placing it on her lap. It's not that bad. You get used to it. She tilts her head to the side and gives a light grunt as if saying, that's so, and we turn to the silence of before. Again, I reach for the cassette player. So what are you doing out here? Are you going camping? Seems like what you're doing is fun. I take a deep breath and hold it, in, <laughs> it on as long as possible before letting it out. Just traveling. What about you? Why are you out here? Oh, well, it's kind of silly. She scratches her head and lets out an embarrassed laugh before staring at her feet. She quiets down and surprisingly stays quiet. Well, looks like that worked. We reach for the cassette player one last time. I stop for a moment to look at the glove compartment and then Marina, who looks lost in thought. Finally, I press play. <laughs> 